Hi, everyone. Great to see so many people here. Um, we've been talking to loads and loads of people over the course of today, so I hope my voice will not fail me uh, later t today. Um, but yeah, I think we're ready to kick this off. Uh, to introduce myself briefly, my name is Fabian. I lead the sales team at uh, Bubble, and I'm here today with Albert uh, Astabatian, who uh, is the co-founder of Synflow, a super cool uh, AI tool that he built on, on Bubble. And so what we're talking about today is a little bit uh, about, we'll get to know the product that Albert built, his, uh, the story of his background, um, why he built on Bubble and um, uh, how that's been going for him, um, and also how he was able to raise $2 million in a super short amount of time for, for his company. I think a lot of the people in here um, have dreams of being a founder um, and building a product that takes off and uh, to be able to raise funding to scale it. Um, or maybe you're doing it all already. And we want to chat a little bit about that experience of starting a company, building on Bubble, raising funding, and a few of the learnings uh, in there. Uh, hopefully, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, but yeah, I would say let's, let's get into it, first of all. Thank you for being here, Albert. Um, really cool to have you here. Um, and if you maybe want to tell us a little bit about yourself um, and uh, the background of uh, what Simflow is and, and how it all started. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, super excited to be here. Um, so I'm Albert, uh, co-founder of Simflow. We are a team of uh, seven, eight people, I think, uh, at this point. Uh, but we started uh, three of us. Um, and uh, we uh, highly uh, leveraged and used uh, Bubble to build our product. And um, Bubble was very helpful uh, during our journey. And um, yeah, the entire thing with Synthflow started, uh, I think, six months ago. And uh, we built it uh, fairly quickly. We were able to build it, uh, build the first uh, prototype MVP quite quickly. Um, we got uh, really lots of uh, traction and demand uh, in short amount of time. And um, what was after that is uh, the pre-seed round and now we have the resources to further build our team and uh, yeah. Cool, awesome. Well, thanks for the, for the kicking it off here. Um, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about what is Synflow, what's, what's the product that you've built, um, and then you have a little bit of a demo prepared, so it would be cool to see what you've built as well. Yeah, sure. So the idea of Synflow uh, was, uh, came uh, fr from, um, from the fact that it was super hard for uh, people without technical background uh, to create uh, a bit more complicated AI uh, other than uh, you know, creating a wrapper around OpenAI API, uh, that is uh, fairly easy. But when it comes to creating agents, uh, which you can train uh, with uh, custom information and which can interact with outside environment with other tools, uh, this kind of uh, AI tech was uh, not really accessible for no coders. And um, I faced it myself, being a no-coder, faced the challenge myself, and this was, this was the starting point. So after developing the first MVP, we saw that there was uh, really lots of demand, and many no-coders were interested to uh, try it out, to use it, uh, basically without writing any code to set up AI agents, uh, which can do a bunch of stuff. I will uh, talk about the use cases uh, in a moment. Um, yeah, and then integrate uh, with APIs, uh, with a plugin, or uh, just using an iframe or things like that. Cool. Awesome. Should we take a look at it? Yeah, sure. So. This is the product, this is the um, interface dashboard. And uh, right now the entire uh, front end of our product is built on Bubble. And uh, it gives us advantage that, it's, uh, that we're very quick when it comes to implementing backend uh, stuff into front, front end. We're super quick and we have lots of flexibility 
And uh, we also think that Bubble, uh, you can do really cool and uh, pretty stuff on the front end with Bubble. And um, this is the interface where I have all my agents, right? And uh, there are different use cases for such agents. One example would be um, uh, the uh, interview agent, uh, which uh, we built for um, Singapore University, right? It's Singapore. Uh, and what it does, it basically uh, conducted a very large uh, interview study for this university. They deployed one agent, and it was able uh, to conduct this entire st study, collect all the data uh, from the participants, and uh, process all this data on scale. Uh, it saved uh, lots of, uh, you know, uh, lots of manual work, lots of uh, money uh, for them, and uh, they were able to uh, conduct this thing in a very short amount of time. Uh, here's one example. Let's say I start here. Uh, agent name is Sophia. She is uh, welcoming me and says, uh, "Hey, uh, provide your LinkedIn link." And after I provide my LinkedIn address here. Just give it a moment. Yeah, so now it has all the, just from one simple uh, link, uh, profile link, it has now all the information about my profile. It knows all the experience, uh, my, my background and uh, past uh, work experience that I had. And now it's going to uh, customize the, the study based on my uh, background and going to collect all the information with so-called entity extraction, right? And all this data is going to be collected. Uh, the, the university was able to extract all this information and uh, process the information and uh, it went really smoothly and um, yeah, was super quick. This is one uh, great e example uh, of, of uh, one of our users. Uh, another interesting example is um, uh, a user. It's a veterinary uh, consulting online services for pets. And um, the user, uh, it's an early startup and they basically uh, utilize five agents and it saves them um, uh, over 10K a month, but ba uh, based on what the user told us, 10K uh, dollars a month, um, you know, in customer uh, support and in sales, basically. I know it doesn't sound good that it uh, replaces human work, but uh, yeah, it, it actually is pretty good for startups, yeah. <laughs> Exactly, that's one example. Another example is um, the voice agent, um, which is in closed beta right now. We have uh, circa 20 participants who are uh, participating in our closed beta. And uh, what's, wh wh what is a voice agent? Imagine uh, you talk to an AI in real time. So you can conversate in real time. You don't need to wait for it. It's not text to speech where you have to wait for it to uh, generate the entire uh, inference and then tr translate into a voice. It's talking to you in real time. So every word that is generated, it's streaming uh, live. Uh, quite a powerful thing. You can interact with it. It, it, it uh, show, shows uh, human behavior. Uh, so when you actually, during the speech, you, you um, cut it, it's going to accept it and adjust the behavior accordingly. And um, here you can see, for example, here, um, I can show you maybe at least, so it's in closed beta, but at least I can show you how you can set up such uh, a voice agent. Um, you can configure the prompt so you can provide all the information, uh, minimum amount of information about your startup, what your startup does and what's the name of your startup. You can provide the script, which is which are the stages of the conversation, and the agent is going to adjust its behavior. It's going to read the uh, stage of the conversation, right? So we're in the middle of the conversation, 
later will be uh, at the close closing part of the conversation and is going to adjust its uh, behavior accordingly. Uh, this is uh, context awareness and uh, you actually, the users can use, uh, you know, you have different options uh, for uh, language models like OpenAI or uh, Entropic and so on. Uh, what we're doing, we're going a step further and we are offering our users uh, fine-tuned uh, language models at different uh, templates. So if you're actually going uh, to utilize your agent for sales, we have a template for outbound sales. So not only the information that you provide uh, as context, also the language model you're going to use is going to be fully fine-tuned and adjusted to, the, to your use case. So that's a really cool thing. You can assign it a phone number so it can do inbound calls, it can receive calls, it can do, uh, you know, uh, one great example is um, you're a startup, so you deal uh, with uh, churning users, and when a user churns, you would like to collect some inf information, what's the reason of churning, right? You would like to understand it and uh, act upon it, right? And uh, so you can set up a, an agent uh, that can call your churning users and collect all this information, save the information, and then you can do with it whatever you want. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there are tools. You can connect your calendar with it. It's actually going to do the initial interview. And... Um, and then it can also schedule a meeting, check your availability, schedule a meeting, uh, so that at a later stage, uh, you can, when the lead is already qualified, you can take it from there yourself as a founder. It's gonna save you tons of time. Uh, yeah, so I would say, I think, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's um, pretty much, uh, hopefully gives you some understanding uh, how uh, this type of agent uh, can be set up. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, happy to. Yeah, that was you. incredible. Thank you so much for, for walking us through here. Um, I work at Bubble, but I am still amazed at times what our users build on, on Bubble. It's like really, really cool to, to see this. I think for anyone who's not familiar with the power of Bubble or no code in general, if you tell them you can build something like this without having to be a software developer and, and code yourself, it might sound too good to be true. Um, but even having worked with a lot of different users and customers, it's still like it's, it's just uh, so exciting to see what's, what's possible and what, what you're able to build. So what everyone sees here essentially means um, that your customers, your clients, they can access the power of OpenAI, the power of Anthropic and their models within a few setup steps in a few minutes, um, thanks to the, the underlying platform and product that, that you've built with Bubble and with the uh, AI tools here as well. Yeah, so uh, basically uh, what we're trying to achieve, we're trying to offer uh, um, AI employees for, for startups, uh, or people, and we're trying to um, enable more efficient way of working so you can employ AI, which is uh, way cheaper, right? Or you can uh, clone a version of yourself, uh, which uh, can do arranged meetings. Let's say you want to uh, follow up and, uh, you know, uh, schedule a meeting with your gardener or something, and you can create a copy clone your voice, create a copy of, of yourself, and <laughs> it can basically, you know, do um, schedule meetings on your behalf and uh, save you tons of uh, time, right? Uh, yeah. Quite it's a cool thing. It's a crazy future, <laughs> crazy glimpse into the future. Of, yeah, exactly. Of work, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite crazy, and uh, the pace that the entire ecosystem is uh, evolving, it's quite crazy, and uh, we have more stuff in working, and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's super interesting, and I would say Bubble is the only platform that uh, allowed us to achieve that. If you take uh, literally any other no-code platform, uh, 
all the entire scopes that we had in mind wouldn't have been possible to implement. Yeah. 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 That's that's cool to hear. I'm curious to learn a little bit more, hear a little bit more about how you decided to use use Bubble because. Um, again, like there are probably plenty of other people who built this in like traditional development uh, methods with a team of software engineers, um, and how you came to start this this product and and why you made the choice of of using Bubble versus uh, different alternative approaches. Yeah, so we've been in a no code space. I personally have been in no code space for quite a while, and I have uh, quite some experience with working with Bubble. So I already knew the uh, capabilities. Uh, the only uh, challenge that we were facing is, um, you know, it's a complex AI. So you kind of have to combine different uh, stacks into one. And uh, the only challenge was, okay, so we're gonna have uh, two uh, backend engineers who are working with traditional code. Uh, I'm working with Bubble. So how are we going to create this type of uh, hybrid uh, solution, right? Because there are not that many who uh, that utilize uh, this kind of thing. Most of these are uh, the, the, the open source projects and stuff. When you look at them, they are based on traditional uh, code-based uh, platforms. So the challenge was, okay, how am I going to work with these engineers? How's, how's the communication going to take place? Is it going to be faster? Is it going to be slower? we ended up being really fast, so. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of like leads into the next question. If someone wants to build a startup like yours um, and you've been super successful in a short amount of time, so I'm sure like there are plenty of people inspired to do something similar. If they have doubts about should we build on bubble or more generally speaking, should we use no code or should we go the traditional route? How do you, how do you explain why this is the right choice, uh, why it was the right choice for you and probably for them as, as well? <coughs> well, um, first of all, when you're starting, when you're just starting, it's, um, you know, first of all, you wanna test your idea. So um, it's uh, a bit um, restrictive in terms of resources to create a team, uh, engage uh, many developers, you know, uh, when you don't have that many resources yet and uh, usually you would start yourself or just a couple of people testing out the idea. And the bubble is uh, the fastest and uh, most straightforward approach to do that. Uh, you don't need any coding language, uh, you know, coding uh, uh, experience. At the same time, it's uh, capable enough to basically, you know, you have like, uh, different no-code tools and uh, each of them is specialized in some certain thing. One of them is uh, specialized in building uh, landing pages. One of them is like Shopify, it's for e-commerce platforms and Bubble is kind of Swiss army knife, right? And you can do basically whatever you want, uh, very custom solutions. Uh, so you test with Bubble, in the process you realize it's powerful enough to go quite a long way and then it's easy enough also to integrate with uh, external uh, stacks like uh, backends, uh, other backend solutions, um, and you'll stick to it. Uh, there's no reason to actually change it. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome to hear, thank you. So I wanna talk a little bit about the fundraising processes as well. Maybe kind of like curious question in the audience here. Are there any founders in here or more like agencies? Like who's a, who's a founder here in the audience? Okay, there's a few. Who wants to be a founder maybe? Okay, also, also a few. So, so it, this is, seems, seems to be relevant, so that's, that's cool to see. So um, one thing that we're seeing at Bubble often is we like our core audience really is startup founders, entrepreneurs who want to build a product on Bubble, sometimes because they don't know how to code themselves, sometimes because they see the benefits of building on Bubble because they can move faster or they, can, um, they, need, they don't need as many resources uh, for, for it. And many of the companies we work with and that we see having a certain level of success on Bubble are bootstrapped and don't necessarily re need funding from, from investors. But I think oftentimes there's a certain point when you know you have go-to-market, um, uh, product market fit and 
you know something is working, but you need to scale, and marketing becomes more expensive, hiring people becomes more expensive, and, and you want to invest um, in really scaling the business where fundraising becomes more, more relevant. And there is a certain challenge of people who build on a no-code stack where a lot of investors are just not comfortable with that yet. They might not be familiar with it. They might have doubts about <laughs> vendor lock-in or whatever it might, might be there. Um, you recently, I think last week, announced that you raised $2 million uh, um, as a, a pre-seed round, uh, right? And that's obviously, that is a massive amount of money and hopefully... Uh, 1.8. 1 1.8, <laughs> okay, okay, almost $2 million. Um, that's, that's very significant and so we'd love to hear a little bit about um, yeah, how, how, what that fundraising process looked like um, generally speaking, but also how you addressed and worked around the, the question of what is your tool stack, um, what are you building on, compared to uh, how a lot of other startups are sti still being built today. Yeah, yeah, so that's a good question because uh, if you would uh, look at the VC market um, a couple of years ago or even a year ago, uh, most of them were quite hesitant uh, to fund startups which were building on no code. Uh, that is changing, at least it has changed uh, dramatically for us and um, uh, when we pitched uh, for our uh, funding round this time, um, it was actually seen as an advantage uh, that we're building on Bubble because they were able to see uh, that it adds flexibility and speed. And uh, surprisingly enough, uh, they were quite bullish on no-code space and uh, Bubble. And this time it was actually an advantage. So we, we have seen ourselves that uh, this has changed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and was that across the board from the investors you've, you've talked to or were there kind of like mixed, uh, it, mixed it's emotions? It's mixed. More traditional uh, investors, they are still uh, bullish on uh, traditional, like we had even uh, discussions with investors uh, who, who said, yeah, I don't think uh, no code has a future, which is <laughs> stupid, sorry. <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, but um, if you talk to, to a bit more uh, sophisticated uh, VCs who, who do their research, I mean, they do realize that it's something you can't ignore. And um, if it adds e efficiency speeds, then right, it's, it's good for, for uh, everyone involved, basically. Yeah. yeah, that's cool to see, like a pragmatic approach in the end. If it's a benefit to you, then it's a benefit to them as investors yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Th there's another thing that I think probably a lot of people in this this room like you ask yourself or or you encounter in, in kind of like in, in your work that this perception that no code is amazing to build an MVP but it doesn't scale. I think you have already scaled your product to a, a fairly significant scale and, and you're planning to keep keep doing that. Um, and we're seeing that a lot as, as well. Really, really successful uh, startups that go all the way on, on bubble, um, but not everyone necessarily feels comfortable doing that or there's at the very least a lot of questions around it. So if you can talk a little bit about how you're thinking about staying on bubble, how you're thinking out sc about scaling on, on no code and what's What's your, your perception and your team's perception on, on, on that topic, uh, which I think is a really important one in general? Yeah, uh, scaling is uh, something that many people are uh, concerned about. So in the beginning, you really don't need to worry about scaling at all. So uh, the first uh, few thousand users, you can uh, definitely no need to worry at all. Uh, but then we have now, uh, I think uh, close to uh, 8,000 users and uh, over 200 paying users and um, we haven't seen any issues, right? So we started at the lower plan uh, that uh, Bubble is offering, but then you can scale, you can uh, add more capacity units and it's going to help you uh, add more users and uh, increase, uh, increase the scale. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the demo. Thank you for the for the over overview. Um, really interesting to hear about the fundraising process as, as well. 
um, wanted to make this as much as possible an, an open conversation with everyone here in the audience as well. So I think we have about 15 minutes left um, for, for this conversation here. So wanna open it up to anyone in, in here. If you have questions for Albert about SynthFlow, or also if you have general questions about Bubble, I'm uh, more than happy to chat uh, about this as, as well. Um, but yeah, let's kind of like open it up. Anyone who has, has thoughts or, or questions um, where you're curious to hear more about. Top question. <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, so the first question, the first part, why we combine with uh, backend uh, with something outside of Bubble? It's um, AI. One of the specific things about AI is um, it heavily uses uh, pi Python uh, language, right? And uh, Bubble is um, only. So compatibility with Python is restricted at this point. Of course, in future you will guys <laughs> tackle that uh, thing as well. But yeah, but it's very specific thing to AI, right? So um, so frameworks like Langchain, uh, you probably heard about, or uh, things like that. They are based on Python, and um, we kind of bring this uh, world uh, and bubble together by. Uh, combining both and creating this hybrid solution. Uh, that, that's the uh, that's the main uh, reason. Yeah. And the uh, second part, um, yeah. So I think it depends uh, on on what type of app uh, you are building. If it's um, the amount of workflows uh, you have. Uh, if the pricing is, uh, been, uh, you know, is good or bad for you, um, I've heard that some uh, builders migrating to the new pricing systems, uh, it ended up being cheaper. Some, for some, it ended up being significantly more expensive. But in the end, um, if your startup is generating money, uh, it's it's not a big, um, you know, chunk of this, you know. You, yeah, I would say. If if you if you create a full stack uh, based on different solutions outside of Bubble, it's also going to end up costing uh, quite a bit, right? <laughs> Sasson is saying, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's obviously our philosophy generally as as well. We want to have a product that is as affordable as possible. Yeah while making sure we are able to reinvest in our product, to reinvest in our, our business, um, because there is so much that we want to do in terms of our product's capabilities, in terms of the, the platform, the ecosystem, new product offerings that we're not even touching at all uh, yet. And having a strong business is obviously a, a part, of, part of that, but the idea very much certainly is that we want to avoid as much as possible that anyone who has a successful business that is growing would have to migrate off of Bubble. And I think at the moment, I hope we're striking a decent decent balance there, but it's certainly something that like, we need to recalibrate and reevaluate on, on an occasional basis at the, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good question. Um, it was all uh, user driven, so user feedback driven. Uh, the demand was very high and we got lucky that the users were very keen on working with us, uh, pushing us and giving uh, feedback very, very, uh, you know, eagerly. And uh, we got uh, tons of interactions in Intercom um, in the beginning and it was, uh, 
super helpful for us to uh, you know guide us towards uh, the direction of uh, where we are and uh, we ended up also bringing some of the customers into our slack uh, channel and um, ended up uh, talking to them multiple times daily and uh, yeah so it was definitely user feedback driven everything yeah Yeah, uh, so mostly yes. Uh, many were um, coming from their uh, experience with Bubble. So we, we have been uh, quite uh, open about it. We have the plugin and stuff, and uh, we have mentioned Bubble a lot, so users from Bubble ecosystem. Um, we did a product hunt, so many were via product hunt, so that's a cool source of uh, traction uh, if you are a founder. Um, yeah, and uh, many organically, you know, um, from our website, um, just uh, wrote to us in Intercom, uh, and uh, we got uh, the, all this feedback, yeah. And word of mouth, I would say, yeah. Uh, it was super quick this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congrats for the coming round, and I guess now you're planning to grow your team, right? Uh, my question would be, what is your plan on growing a bubble team? Like, are you looking for uh, developers to get experience or experienced founders? Yeah. Yeah, very good question, uh, because we are indeed looking for uh, people. Um, so uh, I'm the only bubbler at this point. We are looking another bubbler to join us uh, ASAP. We will also announce it uh, soon, but we are happy to uh, receive your applications if you're interested. And uh, so we, we, we desperately need uh, a bubbler now. And another uh, hires that we need at this point is UX UI. Um, so that's also, if you are interested, we're more than happy to uh, talk to you. Yeah, uh, right now we have uh, two backend engineers uh, and we went, um, yeah, it wasn't an easy process in the beginning because uh, some were hesitant uh, or didn't uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, didn't get used to working uh, with this approach and with Bubble, uh, but we ended up having two really good guys who are, uh, who quickly understood uh, also how Bubble works and um, we ended up, you know, having this uh, system of uh, working together, and um, yeah, it, it ended up working quite well. We we didn't put that much thought into it; it just happened, uh, you know, uh, during time. So maybe one also thing to mention. Uh, Bubble has all these internal API workflows that you can use, for example, um, you know, to create, uh, to interact with the database easily from the back end, to modify things and uh, to create new things. Uh, so it was once the developers uh, understood this, all this entire approach, they were very quickly able to uh, kind of integrate the bubble uh, database, connect the bubble database with their backend and um, make this entire thing work smoothly. Yeah, go for it. What do you think of the difference between a dedicated server and the bubble versus using the master main and um, option? Yeah. Is there 
Uh, we're, we are not uh, dedicated yet, but we are going towards dedicated. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, Fabian is the guy to answer that question. Uh, but uh, yeah, as, as I understand, you get tons of uh, benefits uh, with dedicated. It's more custom and uh, you get more power and uh, yeah. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about this. Um, maybe for everyone's <laughs> context there, what, what this means. So generally speaking, when you run a bubble application, any type of bubble application, that app is run in Bubble's shared environment, um, particularly on our AWS infrastructure in US West in, in Oregon. And so you can think about this, that you have your application and loads and loads and loads of other applications all running at the same time in the same uh, infrastructure. And for the most part, that makes the most sense. It's the most scalable. It's kind of like the, the most efficient to run from our perspective as, as well. Um, and for the vast, vast majority of our applications and our customers, I think that's the right, the right choice. The being able to run Bubble on a dedicated instance is something that we started offering, um, I think, quite a, quite a while ago, a few years ago, for a number of different customers that had very specific uh, requirements. And the difference there is that instead of your app being in our shared uh, environment with a whole bunch of other apps, we spin up a separate instance of Bubble where we run only your app, only your database. Um, and so there's an added degree of essentially isolation from everything else that's happening in, in basically with all of the other bubble, bubble applications. And generally speaking, I think as, as much as we would love to sell that to, to everyone, I think most users don't, don't need it uh, because their applications just run fine on the, on the regular plans. Um, but the reason why we have customers choosing that as an option um, tends to fall into, I would say roughly speaking, two buckets. One is simply from a scalability perspective. There some, are some applications that reach a certain level of scale where being on our standard plan in our, in our shared infrastructure just doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work for them and it doesn't work for us either. Um, where in the past we've had applications that have reached such a level of success and scale where their essentially level of usage started to become a problem for our own infrastructure just because it would impact other, other users' applications. And so in those cases where the level of usage is really high, and some of our, our apps today have like multiple millions of, of users, having a separate infrastructure for them where we can configure it and customize it to their specific needs makes a ton of sense purely from a scalability <laughs> perspective. And then there's a second component that is a lot more around security, compliance, data residency, and all of that, where there are typically like startups that are building B2B products or enterprise clients with very strict requirements where they need to be on their own isolated instance or they need to have the data stored in a specific lo location um, or they just have certain requirements that go beyond what's possible on our, our standard plans there. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to like apps that reach a certain level of scale, and I think uh, Albert and team will uh, will probably get there relatively soon, where it just almost becomes a must-have and, and makes the most most sense for stable, reliable, really strong performance. And then the security, compliance, data residency bucket that's a little bit more in the enterprise space. So I will kind of like bucket it, roughly speaking, into these these two categories. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, good questions. Uh, so the first one, um, so the first question, uh, could you remind me the first? It was about the, the, main, the main driver for investments 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Both, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, luckily this time, uh, you know, uh, before it was like very hype driven, all this crypto stuff, right? At this point, I guess uh, this is learned uh, from their mistakes, I assume. And uh, in our case, at least they were looking into the uh, hard KPIs, right? Okay, how many uh, users, how many are uh, converting to paying? and uh, what's the trend, and of course also the state of the product. So part of the uh, process is the technical due diligence that VCs do, and they look into your uh, stack. In our case, we also utilize Bubble, which uh, had no issues for them, uh, quite the opposite. Uh, the second question was, um, wh what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we made sure that we had uh, enough uh, uh, enough uh, MRR, enough MRR generating, and we made sure we have a solid product in place, you know, to uh, uh, show a decent, uh, decent infrastructure during the diligence. So we, we made sure that we have uh, uh, the, uh, you know, we have the vision uh, clearly uh, depicted on everything, slides and everything. We can, you know, have a solid vision that we can communicate. So all that has to be in, in place. So you kind of have to do your homework. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you will. Yeah, it's a uh, good question. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's part of the components, right? So you have part is the product, it has to be solid, part is the uh, user engagement, uh, that you can show that there is, um, you know, there is enough uh, interest in your product, part is the market uh, itself, uh, the AI is super heated up or has been super heated up, um, how early you are, right, uh, competition, so there are a bunch of components, but of course uh, they, especially lately they started to look into uh, monetary KPIs uh, more than before. So I, I think it really depends on uh, on the area you are. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess in, in, AI, in AI a bit, uh, you need a bit more above average, I would say, because if the market is heated up, the expectation is that you can monetize more, right? Uh, can I can I say or yeah yeah welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, so, um, no, there is no reason to move because um, I, we see it as an advantage, right? It's, it's uh, quick and it gives us everything we need and we're uh, super quick on iterating on front end. And one interesting thing is that uh, I, I'm a no-coder, so I develop visually um, and um, so I'm closer to UX UI of the products than our backend engineers. This way I can kind of bring my perspective uh, closer to the users, closer to the UX UI of the product. I can bring it in into the product directly. So that's quite a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. You have. Uh, oh, you mean the competition-wise, or yeah. yeah? You have. You have many. Uh, you have really many, but um, 
in the end, um, it uh, boils down to um, it, uh, to real life application and uh, is it adding uh, value in real life or not. If you check, there are many demos also, but uh, a demo is not does not necessarily mean production ready. It's uh, two different things, right? We we had the experience with that ourselves. Um, we have users who actually get real uh, value and it's an indication for us that also for the investors also that um, you know it's it has potential but yeah competition ai it's uh, huge and is gonna be huge uh, it's a tough market but uh yeah yeah i think we can do one more last question and then we'll have to wrap up probably Yeah, there are uh, different use cases. Um, <coughs> many users are bubblers themselves who are building, uh, integrating Synthflow um, into their applications um, and uh, building agents. And uh, many are uh, using us for customer support agents. Many are using for sales. And uh, now we have also very, very big demand for very huge interest for the voice agent, um, uh, which you can basically use to um, uh, to replace so many functions uh, behind a phone, behind, uh, you know, like uh, in customer support uh, department sales. Even we have an interesting case of uh, a user who is uh, trying to build AI teacher for students. So he's, um, he has hired um, professional voice actors who are cloning, uh, kind of talking in the voice of Isaac Newton or something, and they're building a real life AI teacher. <laughs> like imagine you have a teacher who is uh, Isaac Newton or <laughs> uh, yeah, some other scientist, right? Uh, yeah, so you can imagine, I mean, it's, it's, it's so early, we're still uh, stumbling uh, upon so many interesting new use cases um, and I think the potential is uh, insanely big yeah awesome thank you so much Albert uh, for walking us through everything it was yeah, super super much. cool to hear thank you and yeah thank you all for joining as well we might stick around for a few more minutes if you have more questions happy to chat a little bit more see you all <laughs>